Good morning, church. I want to start with a very short one-question survey, but it is a question that may, some of you, some of you may have a hard time remembering the answer to because it's referring to a time that may have been quite a while ago for you. Was being a teenager a challenging time for you? But before you raise your hands, I want to clarify that challenging time doesn't necessarily mean that it was an overall negative experience, because sometimes a challenge is a good, positive thing. And it is fine and normal for you to answer either yes or no to this question. But think back on what it was like to be 13 to 19 years old. Or think back on today, if you are currently 13 to 19 years old. And if you will, raise your hand if you agree, being a teenager was a challenging time of life. Yes, I am seeing a good number of hands. And I could only see the hands of the people in this room. If you're watching online, you can, you can put your hands down. Um, I had no idea how that was going to go. I've asked a few friends about that this week, but... Yeah, I could see a lot of hands, and, and that doesn't surprise me because the teenage years or adolescence is a time of transition, and transitions are challenging. They are a formative period of life when you're not quite a child, but you're not quite an adult yet either. I mean, there's a big difference between a sixth grader and a twelfth grader. It's a time of growth and change on every level, from physical to social to emotional and, yes, spiritual as well. And that last one is what I'm most interested in talking about today. We call it youth ministry, or for a more formal term, adolescent spiritual formation. This is the ministry of our church, of a church, to our youth and their families as we help to guide them through the challenges of being a teenager and all that it entails. A big part of it is developing a faith that is their own and apart from their parents and choosing Jesus for themselves, navigating through the questions of belief and not being afraid to ask those questions, even if they are hard. Even more challenging is doing so in the midst of the social pressures of middle school and high school, a time when church and youth ministry is one spinning plate among many other extracurricular activities. And now, that's always been the case, but most of us didn't have social media or even the internet when we were teenagers. And Snapchat and Instagram and all the rest haven't made this experience any easier. So on these fifth Sundays, such as today, instead of a sermon, I like to interview people in our church because I think it's just as important to hear from you about how you have seen God at work. And today we're going to be hearing from several of our current youth ministry students who have opted not to join me on stage, which is fine. I will be reading their responses as well as those of a few youth ministry alumni Adults who grew up at this church once upon a time. Because historically, youth ministry has been a very important focus of the Livonia Church of Christ. It has been for decades. Now, in the earlier years, we had several couples and families like the Wanios and the Ruckers that spearheaded the teen program. Uh, Jan Sim, Sims told me that back in the day, the youth group had a really good mentoring program, but even had officers like president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, and in that time, several people over the years have been involved as volunteers, including Curtis Burton, Lisa Baumunk, and Norman Julie Smith, and to many, many others. And to this day, our youth ministry could not thrive without our volunteers. After all, this is a ministry of our church. Well, eventually, we started hiring full-time youth ministers, doing so years before many other churches did, by the way. And in 1976, we had uh, hired Rob Robinson as an associate minister. Same year we hired this guy, the other guy on screen. Um, and uh, he uh, was uh, hired as the associate minister 
to, and he worked, he had a lot of different areas he worked in, but youth ministry was one of them. And he worked on, alongside with the Wanios, who continued to plan several events. But shortly afterward, in 1977, he became the preaching minister. And who does that, honestly? I mean, well, so we didn't have a full-time youth minister for a few years afterwards. But then in 1980, we hired Robert Dutton to be our youth minister. And he was here until right around 1983 and was followed by Matt Flanagan, who was here for about from 1985 to 1987. And then from 1988 to 1993, David Cohn served as a youth minister, uh, followed by Jim McKenzie from 1994 to 2000. Then after Jim, we hired Mark Phelps, who holds the current high score, serving eight years from 2000 to 2008. Then after Dave, uh, Mark was Dave Blanchard, who was here from 2008 to 2014. Then there was some guy. Uh, he only had like a three and a half year stint before he became the preaching minister. I think his name's like Mark Mills or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, then we hired Sam Barry in 2018, and he's already ministered here for longer than three and a half years. And I believe that I can speak for all of these guys, plus many other youth ministers who have served not just at this church, but other churches. When I say that youth ministry is a tremendous blessing, but... It isn't easy. There's a reason that the average tenure nationally of a youth ministry is only about three or four years. It's a very socially involved job, and I'd say it involves a lot of burnout. I've seen a lot of youth ministers who are no longer youth ministers anymore. But it is absolutely worthwhile, though. And I was blessed to be the youth minister here, and I am so, so grateful that I've been able to stay and watch several people grow into young women and men who love Jesus and seek to live and love like he does. And I'm also grateful that I didn't have to be the youth minister during a global pandemic. Sure, Larry Stevens has said the same about being the preaching minister right now. He's glad he retired when he did. I have confessed that this isn't easy, but I want to commend Sam Barry, for the work that he has been doing and continues to do. I have been continually impressed with him and his ministry here, and I know that many of you have as well. But I don't believe he gets enough recognition, and he does not know this. But I'd like to ask him to come up here so that we can do that right now. Come on up, Sam. I got something for you, too. Come on. Sam, on behalf of the Livonia Church of Christ, I want to thank you for being who you are for so many people. You are a friend, a listening ear, a teacher, a mentor, a lunch and dinner companion. You are an example of the love of Jesus. I have a gift for you. You can open it right now on stage. <laughs> And uh, go ahead. Oh, coffee mug. It is a coffee mug. And if you can't see it from the back, this is what it has on it. Oh gosh. That, is... <laughs> that is remarkable. <laughs> I want you to drink coffee out of that every single day. I will. Thank you, Sam, for being our friendly neighborhood youth minister. <laughs> God bless you. You can go sit back down. But thank you. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm going to get that off the screen, though, so. <laughs> All right. On to the interviews. I have responses from four of our young women. Uh, Kennedy McKee, Daria Hinkle, who is in Florida right now, and Alex and Meredith Williams. And I will respect their desire to not join me up on stage unless you change your mind. Nope, cool. All right, that's fine. 
but I am grateful for what they have written. And if you aren't impressed with them already, you are about to be. The first question I ask them is just, just to share your experience as part of Fusion Student Ministry. What are some of your favorite memories so far? And Kennedy said that Fusion has been a really welcoming community that I am so glad to be part of. This sounds so cliche, but it's really nice to have a group of people that I can come to and just be myself. I've got to say that my favorite memories of Fusion happened at the fall retreat. It was so great to learn about God and to have a fun time together all in one weekend. From the regrettable pranks to spilling pop in the car, the experience really brought me closer to a lot of the Fusion members. Daria says, Fusion is a wonderful group of people. Each of us are growing into finding who we are and what we love. Everyone is different in some way. And it's interesting to see each person develop new interests and choose new adventures. I have, some, I have many fun memories of Fusion, but my favorite 10 out of 10 memory is when Ch Sam made the wonderful acronym <sighs> Yultima Jew which means you only live twice, maybe if you choose Jesus, but the maybe must be said with an astronomical amount of sass. I don't think I had enough sass for that, but trust you with that. <laughs> Meredith says, I spent about a week procrastinating finishing this survey. This question specifically, because I didn't think I could give an answer or find the words that would do it justice. But I've come to the conclusion that for me, my fusion experience hasn't been from any events or memories but rather just the group itself. Every event, every gathering, every Sunday and Wednesday class, I am greeted by familiar and comforting faces. Every time I'm with the youth group, I feel comfortable both with myself and the people around me. I feel supported. I feel loved. I get to feel like I'm part of something. I get to have the opportunity to talk about my week. I get to talk about things that are on my mind or deeper topics that I don't get the chance to talk about anywhere else. I get to have inside jokes, and I get to laugh a lot. I've gotten the chance to get to know those older than me and those who just joined our group. I get to be an example of Jesus to them and for them. I get to be around people who more or less are going through a lot of the same things I am. I'm a naturally anxious and introverted person, and a few times a week I not only get to just be around other people, but I get to forget about my anxiety when I'm with them. I am extremely blessed to have experienced everything I have with these people, and I'm super thankful that we get to keep making memories together. And Alexandra says, truthfully, when I first joined Fusion, I felt like I didn't fit in or belong there. Oftentimes, I wouldn't really look forward to attending youth group events. This was not the youth group that I envisioned being part of, especially after seeing the fun and loving community Fusion was while I was growing up. There were many reasons for my disinterest in participating in youth events, and many people in the youth group, even in the church, acknowledged that Fusion was struggling. And while this was difficult for me, I also got the opportunity to see our youth group evolve, learning, and growing through the love of God. While I love the retreats, Winterfest, and mission trips, some of my favorite memories are when we've all been transparent with each other, leaning on each other, confiding in one another through our struggles, as well as our accomplishments. When we spend time just being together, hanging out as friends, as a community, just having fun, not only do I get to be a part of an awesome group of people, but I also know that I have friends that I can trust and who have similar values and beliefs as me and who will always be there for me. The second question I asked is, what have you learned about God and about church? Kennedy shares that I have learned a lot about God over time. I love how in fusion we have opportunities to read passages and, and then hear how everyone interprets what is being said. It's really nice to have a lot of different views and understandings. This helps me to feel closer to God and even be able to think about what he might be trying to say specifically me through, through scriptures. I know a lot of things these days are either 100% or nothing. It's nice not to have someone tell me specifically what a scripture is saying when really none of us truly know. It's nice to hear what others think. I love working through it together. Daria shares that from God I have learned that my path isn't pre-made. Twists and turns will come. If it's viruses or other unexpected things, nothing is set in stone. But with family, friends, and my church, I know that I have people to help me through it all. And I am there for them, and I hope that they know all that. 
Meredith shares that I've learned a lot about God and about church and my time with Fusion, but I think ultimately I learned the most about my own Christianity. For many of the teens, we've grown up in the church and in Christian faith. And if you asked any of us a few years ago, what do you be- why do you believe in God? A lot of the answers would be, well, because I've grown up going to church and I've learned it from my parents. And I think now those answers would be very different. I think a lot of people feel guilty or bad about themselves when they question their faith, thinking, am I a bad person? Or does God hate me for questioning believing in him? And the answer to that, put simply, is no. It's difficult to take a second to think about it, but it's important to remember that your faith is not your own if you don't know for certain that you believe in it. Questioning your faith doesn't wear or break your bond with God, but rather strengthens it. Asking yourself, is this what I really believe, or is this just what I've grown up with and been taught to believe, is an inevitable question. And I think we all need to question our faith at some point. And if your faith survives that questioning, the bond you create with God becomes unbreakable. For me, I believe in God because I've seen Him in my life. Every day I see Him, and I believe that He is always with me. And I believe that God has blessed me with an amazing church family, an amazing group of peers that I will continue to be blessed with for the rest of our lives. And I hope to continue learning more about God and in turn learning about myself too. Then Alex shares that being raised a Christian in a Christian household, I've grown up knowing many things about God. Attending classes, a lot of the stories in the Bible verses we would learn and talk about would repeat after year after year. So I've always felt like I know not all, but a lot of what Christians are supposed to know. Upon first joining the youth group, I felt that nothing had changed. People would share more thoughtful and mature answers, and there was more discussion than there was in the classes I attended previously. However, after spending some more time being part of Fusion, I have realized that I had a sort of a tunnel vision about God, the Bible, and being a Christian. I had been taught about God, stories of miracles, ways God worked through others, and the promises He had made, but those all focused on the past. Fusion taught me about the present making me realize that I was focusing on one aspect of God. My eyes have been opened to the way that God is present now, how he is working through us as a youth group to teach us and to bring us together, not just focusing on Jesus and me, but Jesus and us as a youth group to teach us and bring us together, not focusing on... Je- okay, I'm reading this again. Um, not focusing on Jesus and me, but on Jesus and us as a community, we show up not only for ourselves, but for each other. And then the next question is, how have you seen God at work? Kennedy shares that I've seen God at work in all of the friendships and fellowships in the Fusion group. It's nice that Fusion is so accepting, and so many of the members are inviting. I myself have been so inspired to be a more inclusive person rather than being exclusive to only the people that I know. God has really shown through the people of Fusion and it makes me want to be a light for God. Just want to give a shout out to Sam for being one of those people. Sam, you have really helped me to see the good in myself and to embrace it, but also to identify the bad things and to work on those. Some of the things we talk about really bring us out of our comfort zone and help us uh, think deeply about the things we wouldn't normally think about. And it's really helped me so much. Daria shares that teenagers have a stereotype of being rebellious and troublemakers. But within Fusion, I've seen God help guide other teens along with myself to find Him and love one another. Through service projects and other opportunities to give back, I see God showing the wonderful experience of helping something become a bit easier for someone else. Meredith shares that Sam often asks the question, what's God up to? I've had a lot of time to think about that. I know everybody's probably sick of hearing about COVID by now, but I truly think that in its own weird way, the pandemic has been a blessing in disguise. Being isolated for so long made us realize how much we really love each other. Going from seeing each other twice and even three times a week to nothing was really hard. I missed having people I could be completely myself around. Fusion now is a blessing. Every week for an hour or two, everything goes away. I don't think about the homework that's waiting for me when I get home or what chores I didn't do. I get to make jokes and have conversations about anything. I think I laugh more at Fusion gatherings than I do the rest of the week put together. 
I don't think of these guys as my youth group or my mom's friend's kids. I see them as my friends and more importantly, my family. I also think Sam is a huge blessing. We're regularly told that we are loved, cared about, and appreciated. He understands what it's like to be in our position and treats us and teaches us accordingly. Sam always tells us that we make his job the best in the world. He doesn't view us as his students. He thinks of us as his friends and how lucky we are to have a friend like him. And Alex shares that when I first sat down to answer this question, I thought that I'd have a very difficult time answering it. I have a perfectionist personality, so I feel stuck when there's no right answer. I looked at how people have seen God in the Bible, what miracles he's performed, etc. And after giving it some thought, I realized that I have seen God at work in the youth group countless times. The most obvious for me is how much we have changed. As I mentioned before, I often felt left out of the youth group, and people seem to be very focused on themselves as part of fusion, not fusion being a part of fusion. But God has helped us to realize how distanced we have become, leading us to address it, talking about our thoughts and feelings, and working toward being unified again. On the days when I was feeling down and didn't want to go to church, I have been shown compassion and love from the teens and Sam, even learning something through our topic or discussion that I really needed to hear that day. And, uh, nope, did I? I forgot to save my PowerPoint. Whoopsie. So you get half a PowerPoint today. Um, is there anything you would like to add? Kennedy shared, honestly, I'm just so grateful for the youth group, from the scripture reading to Ghost in the Graveyard. We do so much that is both fun and inspiring. I wouldn't have been able to get through quarantine if we didn't have our Zoom meetings. You inspire, each inspired me to be a better person. And Daria says, I hope you all have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for sharing with us. I appreciate their voices, and I'm so glad that we could hear from them. Like I said, if you weren't impressed with them already, you should be now. And I know their parents are as well. I we are blessed to have some tremendous teenagers as part of our church. You know, we say this a lot, but they are not the future of our church. They are the today of our church. And thank God for that. So I wasn't sure how long this was going to go, um, how long this was going to take me. So I sent another questionnaire out to the youth ministry alumni and people who grew up going to our church, which is a good number. I thought it'd be nice to get, you know, like one or two responses. I got eight Eight responses, and these experiences range from the 1970s to the 2010s, and I regret I do not have time to read every single word that was submitted to me, but I'd like to share a summary of what was shared. Similarly, I started asking people to share about their favorite memories, and several people talked about some of the long road trips to Winterfest and Uplift at Harding, including singing and listening to music on van rides, or the canoe trips and camping trips and sitting around the campfire. But just as many people talked about spending time in people's homes during devotionals and progressive dinners and just spending time together and talking. Both MDYC and MCYC were brought up for the uninformed. That's Metro Detroit Youth Chorus and Michigan Christian Youth Camp, which many of our teens are still active with, involved with today. Some talked about service projects and mission trips. Jane Benson Cantwell said that her top youth group memory was the mission trip to New Jersey after Hurricane Sandy. Now, David Burton is a youth ministry veteran. He had something to say about each youth minister. He said that each youth minister brought something incredible. The Wainio and Rucker families brought all-night parties and canoe trips. Robert Dutton, Monday night in-depth Bible studies and Friday night Dungeons and Dragons events. Matt Flanagan had all night lock-ins at the YMCA. Jim McKenzie, Winterfest trips highlighted by the singing of a few thousand teenage voices. And the annual water polo game versus the teenagers. Taking notes. <laughs> Mark Phelps brought the annual mission trips to Honduras featuring meals at the gas station and soccer games versus the local city teams. Dave Blanchard brought Wednesday night Bible studies that focused on being in the presence of God. Mike Miles was 
making the Marvel world geekness a fun and cool thing, I will take that. <laughs> Sam Barry, seeing our youth minister care so much for the well-being of our teenagers, and he's marrying my daughter, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, we know who Dave's favorite is. <laughs> Next, I asked people, is what impact did youth ministry have on your spiritual life as an adult? Are there specific people that helped you form your faith? And a lot of people brought up Larry and Diane Stevens. Absolutely. Uh, Jane says that because of the connections that the youth group had when I was part of Fusion, when I left town and went to college, I knew I wanted to find something similar there. And one of the first things I did on campus was hunt for a campus ministry that I could join. Dave Blanchard is one of the most important people in my spiritual walk to this day. Dave showed me what it looks like to have a personal relationship with Jesus, how valuable it was to have a Christian community that you are consistently a part of, and the value of packing lightly via his backpack rule. Heather Brubaker says that Jim McKenzie had an open-door policy. He encouraged us to be together whenever we wanted. The kids in my youth group are the ones I wanted to hang out with during high school. Rob Karras, Brian Brophy, Dale Carter, Matt Combs, and Andrea Moyer, who weren't afraid to let everybody know that they were Jesus freaks. They encouraged me to be proud of being a Christian and to not care what others thought. And I don't know if I could have gone to a Christian school, seen the importance of marrying a Christian, and seen the importance of surrounding myself with others that share the same beliefs and values I have. If it weren't for all the time I spent with those in my youth group and my parents who encouraged me to so, be, be so involved with our youth group. Beth McKee shares that for me, the youth group was really the beginning of Christian community. Not that I didn't have it prior, because I grew up in the church, but it was now my own. It established the importance of that kind of community in my life. Bible studies during that time helped me make the decision to be baptized. David Cohn and Jim McKenzie really encouraged me to grow and learn and be myself. They never hinted that anything could hold us back. My experiences in youth groups set me on a solid path toward God, and I am so thankful for those experiences at Livonia. Yvonne Avery is here that we learned so much from Rosemary Middlestadt and Gary Cavender and Marcia Thurmond. They stepped up when our youth minister let go, and they were amazing, and they are amazing. And Laura King shares that different youth ministers, I, I had uh, two during my time, they discussed different spiritual disciplines with us, and I learned different things from both people. One was an example of having strong convictions as an adult. Another was an example of encouraging and loving others, and both left an impact on my life. The next question was a challenging one, but I thought it was important to ask. It is, what did you feel unprepared for? What would our youth ministry do well to focus more on? Because even with the foundation that youth ministry seeks to provide, it isn't perfect. And it isn't always easy transitioning from uh, youth to adulthood. Some talked about suddenly needing to articulate what they believed, especially when entering a world full of different beliefs, including from different churches of Christ. And uh, Cady Heron, uh, Brevetti talked about that in her response. But then there's the challenge of coming back to Livonia after you've left, which several have done. And Beth said that as a con congregation, we should ask, how can we help the kids who aren't kids anymore? but also aren't adults yet, find their way during that very formative time. And so in conclusion, I asked if they had anything to add, and David Burton said, I am so grateful to all of the youth ministers, whether full-time or part-time, who have served at our church. I'm also grateful to the members and leadership throughout the years that have made this ministry an integral part of our mission to serve our families. And Yvonne shared that the youth group program is so important. I have seen its impact on my own children and their lives. We should always keep this a focus. And Laura wrote similarly, I appreciate that Livonia Church of Christ has always valued having a full-time youth minister. It shows an investment in our future. And what a great future that is. I am so grateful that all of us are part of this, that God 
is up to great things in our church, in our lives. God has been and will be for years to come. May God continue to form and transform us, no matter how old we are, as we build upon this foundation of love which we are rooted and established in. And may God continue to bless our church's youth ministry for generations to come. And in all things, may God receive all glory and honor and praise. Amen.